Hey everyone, Jonathan Baylor back with another bonus Smarter Science of Slim show. Very excited. We have a like a bonus bonus show today because I actually have some cool special time sensitive offers. So unlike most shows, we're not going to record this six months ahead of time, make references to holidays that apply when we're recording, but make no sense when the show airs. So this, this is going to be a unique experience. We have a wonderful guest with us today, a friend of the show, someone who's been on before, and I'm sure you enjoyed that conversation as much as I did. We have the clinical nutritionist, the holistic health counselor and whole journey founder owner. She's a delight. I'm so happy to have her with us today. Krista Orecchio, welcome to the show. Thanks, Jonathan. Super happy to be here. Krista, you exceeded expectations here in our pre-show planning and you provided me with just a ridiculous, we usually just go a little, little crazy on these shows, but you're like, boom, bulleted list of stuff you want to cover and it's <laughs> Awesome. So I'm going to, I'm just going to let you rock and roll. You, you, you're you going to tell us how to eat healthy on a budget, right? I thought we could talk about that. You know, when you and I were talking last week, that's a very real issue for a lot of people that want to eat healthier, but they're just not entirely sure how to make that happen within their budget. And so as a nutritionist, I'm getting that question all the time and we've got to make this work in people's lives. I love it. I love it. And it's, it's also, it's, it's always really easy I think for people like you and me who like to geek out on this stuff and we we just like it to um, you know it's it's fun for us to find the optimal solution and always we want to recommend the optimal but then as I'm sure you've experienced in your practice sometimes it's about progress rather than perfection I think it's always yeah about progress rather than perfection because life happens and life is busy and if people feel like they have to be perfect then they'll never get started and so I couldn't agree with you more awesome. it's all about the steps doing better than you did the day before I love it well let's I know you have some wonderful tips and tricks for us so shall we just start from the top yeah let's start from the top all right First. number one tip and trick to eat healthy on a budget from the Krista Orecchio is <laughs> You have to get comfortable with the bulk section. All right. That all right. is really important. A lot of people, they just kind of run right by it because it looks a little bit intimidating. <laughs> but that is the place where you can save the most money and you can buy if you're just one person or, or two people. That makes sense. You can buy the amount that you need for yourself. Or if you are a bigger family, you can still save the money on packaging and marketing. I love it. And Let's it sounds comfortable. So it sounds like buying in bulk to avoid becoming bulky is a good, is that fair? Buying in bulk is part of the smarter science of slim. Yes. <laughs> yes. And so, I mean, I buy, for example, my brown rice pasta in the bulk section, my brown rice, quinoa, then nuts can go bad fairly quickly. A lot of people, I, I would buy them in the bulk section so that I can get a smaller amount just what I'm going to be eating that week or two weeks max. So I love the bulk section for that. And you can get things like xylitol, natural sweeteners. You can buy uh, nutritional yeast mm. flakes, which I would say taste just like Parmesan cheese for our vegan vegetarians, loaded with B vitamins and just enough. And I mean, all this stuff is a third of the price than if you bought it in the aisles. So get cozy with the bulk section. And then most Whole Foods have this little guide to the bulk section, which I love. And they'll even tell you how to make what's in there and, and all those kinds of things. Hey, I, I cannot agree with you more in terms of that buying in bulk and finding those key staples depending on like for example in, in my house I know we eat a lot of mushrooms kale and spinach and, and salmon and we just just we buy a lot of that stuff and it, it's helpful to I mean I know a variety is important but for me having these core staples that I can go to and just every week I just restock in bulk really helps to simplify and to save money it does. And to that point, um, when you mentioned salmon, you made me think of Costco. Mm -hmm. And so the Costco actually has a lot more healthier products than they ever did that you can buy in bulk. So I will buy my wild Alaskan salmon frozen at Costco. And mm -hmm. they also have Mahi Mahi. And that's 25% less expensive, which is awesome. And now nationwide at Costco, they have the Nutiva coconut oil. Mm -hmm. For fifteen dollars, but to get that kind of <laughs> coconut oil would be fifty dollars yeah. in a regular grocery store. So, um, 
just to start to hunt and peck and look for things. You know, they sell almond butter. They sell uh, free-range chicken now at Costco. They have gluten-free crackers, Mary's mm -hmm. crackers there. So, yeah, you've got to kind of look. And if you have a freezer that's big enough, I wish I did. I think I might order one just for this. <laughs> U.S. Wellness Meats. I'm sure you're mm -hmm. familiar with them. Mm -hmm. And you can you can order. I have friends that order their entire winter's worth of meat, mm. clean, organic, natural pasture raised meat from U.S. Wellness Meats, and it's no more expensive than the poor quality meat in the conventional grocery store. Well, I, just to give a concrete example of how this this smart shopping for high quality foods just because this this blew my mind a bit. So mm -hmm. I live here in Seattle, so it's it's easy for us to get good seafood, but I know it's not always possible other places in the country. But at Costco, they have these salmon patties, which are wild caught Alaskan salmon patties. And if you actually break down the cost, it's sub five dollars per pound for wild salmon. That is the least expensive you'll probably find in the nation. Yeah, and and that's and it's it's, it's super convenient and easy because they're already little patty things, and they're not. Um, they have like five ingredients. It's mostly just seasonings, I and mean, they do have some. I think canola oil in them, which is mm -hmm. not my favorite oil, but you know, progress rather than perfection. But <laughs> exactly. exactly. Yeah. Well, I love it. I love it. So you have a, a some specific. I think you call it the dirty dozen or cleaned fifteen that kind of fall into this category. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Sure, and that's a, um, a handout that I'll have you post with the blog. So you have vegetables that are inherently, fruits and vegetables that are inherently stronger and more resistant to pesticides, so they, they can use less pesticides. And so those are not as important to buy organic. If mm. you're on a budget, you kind of want to know what you should buy organic and what you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And so we've got the clean ones and we've got the dirty ones. So I'll just tell you right now that the dirty ones, apples, celery, absolutely needs need to be bought organic. Mm. Strawberries, peaches, sweet bell peppers need to be bought organic. Corn, because of the GMO issue, should absolutely always be organic. Um, grapes, blueberries, lettuce, most potatoes except for sweet potatoes, and then your leafy greens. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So you really want to think of anything that could be a sponge, essentially, and soak up pesticides. You, you've got to buy those organic because it's kind of a buy now, it's a, it's a pay now or pay later type of a thing. You want to eat these healthy fruits and vegetables because they have antioxidants and they're alkaline forming and they can fight cancer. But if you take that inherent property and you put acidic pesticides on something like that, then, you, then you're changing the nature of it. It's not even worth eating in my opinion. Wow. So that's a that's a list, and we'll provide that list written for folks of things you would say are are you might as well skip if you can't do organic. So well, what's on the other end of the spectrum? Which if you can't do organic, it's uh, don't feel bad about it. Yeah, don't feel bad about buying mushrooms, um, non-organic. They are fungus; they defend themselves. <laughs> and so um, grapefruits, avocados, onions, cantaloupe, pineapple, mangoes, and um, cabbage, kiwi eggplant and then watermelon obviously the skin is so thick and sweet potatoes so those are the mm. ones that you really don't necessarily need to buy organic and most of the root vegetables you don't need to because obviously they're they grow underground and they're protected carrots I would put on that list even though it's not on a conventional list Krista what about sources of protein for example if I am either going to not eat salmon uh, because I can't afford it or whatever or I don't have a Costco or I'm gonna eat farm-raised salmon or I'm not gonna eat meat or I'm gonna eat conventional meat what should the choice be in your opinion if you're gonna eat conventional meat <laughs> um, well I think that's probably the most important thing is to buy hormone and antibiotic free meat and eggs I mean you can just do catastrophic damage to your digestive health and your hormonal health think about if we're on a low grade of antibiotics every time we eat that is gonna basically thrash our immune yeah. system and it's what's happened to the country and we just have to go back to basics and so absolutely if if you have the budget for pasture raised eggs that that's I mean most people have if they have an egg sensitivity they're fine with pasture raised eggs where the chickens ate bugs and worms and flies and grass not corn or soy so mm -hmm. I think that that's really important Choosing wild fish, wild salmon can be really expensive, but wild white fish isn't as expensive. Mm. So halibut, snapper, um, cod is less expensive. Those would be three really high quality choices that you could make. 
Awesome. Awesome. And one thing I wanted to mention to the listeners, I, I'm sure you've experienced this too in your practice in terms of ways to save money. I'm also a big fan of Amazon for non-perishable things, amazon.com. Like for example, I, I eat coconut is probably the number one source of calories in my diet. Probably. I just, I love coconut and I do like, I get let's do organic creamed coconut and shredded coconut and basically every kind of coconut you can imagine. And it's all on Amazon. It's all subscribe and save. So I get it for some ridiculous price delivered to me every month at a 15% discount. It's pretty amazing. That, that's a great point. And a lot of our clients in the Midwest, we have them order, ordering these things off of Amazon. And if you do their, uh, I think, $79 a year for Amazon Prime, mm. then you get free shipping all year, nice. free two-day shipping all year. So that's that's another great way. And then if you buy in bulk, like I'll have people buy gelatin in bulk. And so, yeah. Awesome. Well, so you, you have some tips around, we talked about getting certain kinds of produce, organic, some not as important, but uh, for all of our produce, produce, so all of our produce, you have some tips on what to do with it once we've bought it and brought it home. Yeah, so here's the catch. I mean, how many of us are busy, we go to the grocery store, we throw everything in our fridge and we move on about our day, then you're getting ready to, to cook dinner and you, you see that kale all wrapped up and you think, oh, I don't feel like washing that or cutting that, forget it, I'm not even going to eat greens tonight. And that happens, it all goes bad, you throw it away, you buy it again the next week. <laughs> So um, this happens to, to me, it happens to my clients. So you have to budget 20 minutes. I'm telling you, it will change your week if you budget 20 minutes when you get home from the grocery store. Wash your produce. De-stem the kale right, or, or whatever it is that, that you're buying, if it's collard greens, something like that. And just have it prepped in the fridge and that way you're making eggs in the morning, great. You can just throw some greens and some chopped vegetables in there. Then you can throw it into a salad. You can make it into a stir fry and you will be able to have 10 minute meals all week if you just do it all at the same time. I say light a candle, turn on the music, try to have fun with it and prep your food. I love that. It's it's not a, not only are we then buying in bulk, but it's doing a bit of bulk preparation. And we can also, you know, four hour work week that little Tim Ferriss love where it's just batching, right? There's a there's an amount of time we use to get the, the sink cleared out so we can wash stuff and get the cutting board out and sharpen the knife. You only have to do that once and then you just dominate for an hour as you get everything ready for the week. That's gonna save you time too than having that fixed cost over and over again. Exactly. And so our most popular cooking classes are called Cooking for Convenience, the art of cooking once and eating all week. Nice. And so um, to, to that point, I would say you, your root vegetables, we're in fall now, get a butternut squash, get an acorn squash, a few sweet potatoes, those are all going to be really economical. Bake them all at once while you're chopping your veggies and then they're done. You could make a butternut squash soup with some turmeric and ginger and coconut coconut milk in the blender with that with super fast for dinner or you could cube it up into a, a stir fry and add some cumin and cilantro and make a Mexican type of a dish. So these are the things to think about or I always say if you're going to be making grains, brown rice or quinoa, make enough for the next day if you make it for dinner and then put a little coconut milk and maybe some protein powder, some sea salt, grass fed butter and have it as a porridge the next day. Mm -hmm. So just kind of always be thinking ahead. So, Krista, I have to ask you, I know you, you are, are friends with our, our dear friend of the show, Sean Croxton. Yeah. And a lot, you're really plugged into the, uh, the internet nutrition community, you're plugged into the traditional dietetics community, and you're plugged into the ancestral nutrition community. I've noticed you've brought up grains uh, probably f three or four times already in this conversation, and I know a lot of folks in the paleo movement, uh, and myself included, are not fans of grains so uh, it's all good it's all good I'm not like oh grains but uh, so what's up with uh, the grains <laughs> so what's up with grains okay so I am what I would say dietary agnostic okay. and uh, and I don't uh, I'm not a paleo proponent I'm not a vegetarian proponent I'm just a proponent of clean eating okay. and so I find that if you soak your grains overnight then you remove all of the phytic acid mm. and so you then therefore make them much more digestible. So I have people, they'll soak their brown rice or quinoa or find whatever it is. I'm a fan of grains as long as your digestive system is to a position where it can handle it because 
See, my whole thing is a functional medicine spin. And if I get your digestion handled and heal the leaky gut and, and the wrath of whatever has happened, mm -hmm, anybody mm -hmm. can handle grains. They can access all the B vitamins. They can access all the fiber. So I would say soak your grains overnight, rinse them. I have people cook them either in bone broth or if they're vegetarian, in water. And they use a three-inch strip of kombu, which is a sea vegetable, super mm -hmm. high in iodine, that will mineralize the grain. And then you can access a lot more minerals from it so wow fabulous well so so what would you would are you um recommending that folks go out of their way to eat grains or is it kind of like if you really like grains don't feel like they're sworn off forever just do the approach you just recommended exactly if if they work for you that's your approach and and if they don't work for you obviously i would say yeah don't eat them Oh, Everybody cool. needs to find their own balance. But. Yeah, yeah. Well, I really like that. That's we, we always try to find ways on my end. We, we call it sanitizing. It's play on the word sanitizing food. Right. And it sounds like you're saying, correct me if I'm wrong, where if you choose to eat grains, right. this is a way to make them better for you than the conventional approach to eating grains. Exactly. Exactly. Love it. I love it. All right. Well, one more thing I want to cover today because I know your time is super, super valuable, and that is the many ways to is roast chicken. Now I have to. I have to make. I'm gonna. I'm gonna be a little uh, of a naughty boy here. That sounded a little <laughs> weird. <laughs> so, um, uh, so, I'm so, nervous. I don't, no, well, okay. So here, here's my. I, I'm gonna confess my sin here. So my sin, and this is probably. I, I don't. I hope you don't stop liking me after you hear this. But oh, Jonathan, you froze on me. Oh. All right, folks. Well, I think the powers that be were trying to protect me. Myself there because right as I was about to make my confession our internet connection <laughs> fell out so we're back and powers that be I'm still gonna make my confession so here's yeah. my confession Krista <laughs> Drum I, haven't done, I haven't done this for a long time but I think other people might be doing it and I'm curious to get your thoughts so I know you're a fan of roasted chicken and you can use roasted chicken for all kinds of fun stuff but while you're at Costco man it They've got these $5 monster roasted chickens, which I can imagine are probably not the best roasted chickens in the world, but they are so good and they are gigantic and they are inexpensive. So tell us about roasted chicken and tell me how bad I was when I bought one of those or if it's kind of one of those it's okay things. Um, that is all about sourcing. So I don't know where they get, how they make those, do they make those chickens, are they pumped full of hormones so that they get bigger than their britches within six <laughs> weeks? I'm not sure. Do they use canola oil because it's so cheap, you know, to, to roast it in? And that, so I don't know if I can necessarily answer that question, okay. but I think that, uh, I will say, and I, I say there's two types of of animal protein or meat. It's either clean or it's polluted. And if you're going to eat uh, polluted meat per se, I would rather when I eat out, I choose fish over chicken. Hmm. So I think chicken, if it's not organic, is probably the most polluted part of our food supply. Wow. Okay. So maybe just, maybe just ask about that. And we're a huge fan of seafood over here. So just, you First, know, yeah. when in doubt, err on the side of getting it from the water versus getting it from the land. If you live in a place close to water, yes. And, well, and I don't mean actually go out into the water and pure, procure it yourself. We're not doing to spear it up, but you know. <laughs> no, I mean if you, you know, if you live and if you live in Illinois or Iowa, I don't know yeah. if I get the sushi. <laughs> no, no, that's that's totally fair. Well, yeah. Krista, Krista, this is this is brilliant. So I know you've got some exciting things going on in the works right now. Can you tell us what's next for you and where we can go to learn more? Sure. You can go uh, to thewholejourneyonline.com to, to learn more. If you like what you're learning here, I've put together a free video series that is um, only out for one week. It is just launching, and it's about an hour and a half full of video that breaks into three segments. And so in that, I talk about the four changes anybody can make to feel 30 to 50% better right away because I know that's important, you know, having clients you have to get people feeling and noticing quickly that they feel better so that they have the wherewithal to continue. And then the next one I talk about how to heal your thyroid and adrenals naturally because so many people are struggling with both of those glands in their body. 
and uh, the greatest nutritional myths of all time and how to prevent cancer through food. I've got lots of success stories um, in there, which is really rewarding to have worked with a lot of different cancer patients that have healed themselves naturally. So if you go to thewholejourneyonline.com, then those videos will be delivered into your inbox. And I would really recommend anybody that does it treats it like a class where you're taking notes and you're going to take this info into your life and, and start living it so that you benefit from it. Awesome. Well, Krista, thank you so much for the time today for providing these wonderful resources to folks free of charge. That's always cool. And then I know you've got some premium stuff they can check out as well. So they, they can they can listen here. And if they like that, they can check out the free stuff. And if they like that, they can just keep getting deeper and deeper into the whole journey with Krista Orecchio. The whole journey. Yes, we've got a three-month e-course coming up that has been my labor of love. <laughs> For the last year, and it models the exact way I work with private clients, and that's kind of what I'm so excited about right now. Awesome. Well, Krista, thank you so much for joining us today. I know our listeners will very much enjoy those online resources, and I hope you have a delightful rest of your week. Thank you. You too. Hey, happy anniversary. Have a good weekend. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> and listeners, I hope you enjoyed this wonderful conversation as much as I did. Obviously, Krista Orecchio, our guest today, is a and a very knowledgeable individual. So check her out online at thewholejourney.com. And remember, this week and the week after, eat smarter, exercise smarter, and live better. Chat with you soon.